Okay, so today I will show you how to create a digital clock using the Arduino Uno and the OLED display. And I'm using designs from my previous video, where I've taken designs from YouTuber Pussy and turned them into real displays. And this is the actual display from which I want to use the segmented digits designs and show them on this OLED display. This is the 128 by 64 pixel resolution monochrome OLED display, meaning that it can only display one color, in this case it's white, but you can also get this in yellow, blue and some combination of those. It's very bright, quite cheap and you can get this in a few different sizes. The smallest one is around 0.9 inch, the middle one is 1.5 inch and the biggest one is around 2.4 inches. And since they all have the same chip, the same resolution and use the same connection, you can use any of them without changing the code. You can also get this display in the transparent version, which looks kind of cool, although you can only get this in one color, being the blue one and in one size. Now before we start creating the graphics, let me talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is PCBWay. Because if you like electronic projects, you might need 3D printing, CNC machining or a custom PCB, and PCBWay offers all those services for good prices. Plus, if you use the link down in the description, you can get 10 PCBs for free, only paying for shipping. So thank you PCBWay and let's get back to our video. And let's start by generating images for the OLED screen. I will be using a tool called Photopy, which is a free online graphic editor similar to Photoshop and in here I will create a new file in the size of 128 by 64 pixels. Let's set the background color to black and create the image. I will cheat a little bit because I already have the designs from the last video in Adobe Illustrator, so I will just copy this one digit and paste it into Photopy simply by hitting Ctrl V. However, if you don't have Illustrator, that's fine as well, because I have the SVG file on the GitHub page. And all you have to do is to click this row button to open the SVG file and then copy the link of this SVG file. And then inside Photopy, go to File, Open More, Open from URL, paste this SVG file and click the OK button. And I will drag all the layers into our main file into this new project.psd file. And we are on the same step as I was previously from Illustrator. And I will just merge all those layers together by going to Layer, Merge Layers. Maybe put it outside of this group and delete this group. And I can also double click the layer and change the color to white. Now this digit is quite big, so what I will do is I will just scale it by hitting Ctrl Alt T or selecting the Edit Free Transform and then just make it slightly smaller. And since we want to display four different digits at the same time, I think it would make sense to make this digit around 32 pixels wide. And you can actually specify the width in pixels if you scale the layer. So I will again go to Edit Free Transform and this time set the width to be 32 pixels. Confirm the new size and we can move this digit around and maybe create a few more copies by right clicking and selecting duplicate layer. Move it around like so and maybe even two more copies like that. And I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard to move those layers. But those digits still include all those grayscale values and we only need black and white colors. And we can simply turn this into black and white image by adding a new adjustment layer being the threshold. And I can even change the threshold value going from 0 all the way to 255. I think that I will go around here so the gaps are not that big and I quite like the result. Let's simulate showing some time, for example 1, 2, 3, 4. And you can do this in a few different ways. I will do it in a quite complicated way, but you will see why in a minute. I will select the magic wand selection tool, make sure it's not anti aliased the continues should be enabled, as well as assembling all the layers. And then I will click on the segments that I don't want to show. And it might be easier if I just mark those segments. So again, I'm clicking on every segment that I don't want to show with the shift key being pressed. So I'm adding this to the selection. And once I click on all the segments, I will create a new group by clicking this icon new group. And then I will click on this add raster mask icon. And I'm not quite sure how visible it is, but there is now a mask for this group. So everything what's inside this group will be only displayed over those segments. And that's quite helpful because now I can, for example, add the color fill layer, set the color to black and put it inside this group. And now it's hiding all those segments that shouldn't be visible. But I think that instead of hiding those segments, it might look better if we show some pattern. We can edit the pattern fill in a very similar way as we've added the color fill by clicking this adjustment layers icon and selecting pattern fill. But the default patterns are kind of useless for our case because we need some black and white images. So I guess we need to create our own fill. For that I will create a new document in the size of only 2 by 2 pixels. Zoom in as much as I can so I can actually see anything. Then select the pencil tool, set the size to only 1 pixel and draw for example white pixel like this. And then go to edit define new pattern. Maybe add a second pixel in here and again edit define new pattern and then I want this pattern to be defined so edit define new pattern and maybe this one as well so again edit define new pattern 
and if you want you can also continue like this with a bigger parent for example 3x3 three three pixels and I will define this one because I think that this is the one that I've actually used so edit define new pattern and then we can jump into our main document and select from our new pattern so for example this is the first one second one third one and so on and so on and again this is the one that I've used because I like it how it's not so visible at this point we have almost complete the design for our display, we are only missing the column symbol in the middle and that could be done in many different ways, for example drawing a new rectangle with the fill set to white color and the no stroke, create a new rectangle like so, 4x4 four four pixels, make sure it's outside our cover segments group, move it to the right position and then create a copy and I think that at this point we have something that we can display on the OLED screen to see how it looks like. And I will not be starting from scratch but from my older video titled image to OLED in 60 seconds because if I scroll down there is a link to the walkway project and walkway is a free online Arduino emulator and if I run this project I'm displaying a full screen image on the OLED screen being connected to the Arduino Uno board and if I look at the code the most of the code is just the data for the image itself and other than that it's just using the UADG2 library to draw the stuff on the display first clearing the buffer then drawing the image and then sending the buffer to the display so let's do the same thing but use our new image instead in Photopy, I will export this as a PNG image by going to File, Export as PNG image, give it some meaningful name and click the save button. Then open the image to CPP website because we need to convert this image into C style array. In here, select our image, then scroll down and click the swap checkbox, click the generate code and copy output. Inside the with simulation, paste the image. Again, it's just a lot of data in there, but all we need is the name of the image, which is this one. And I will use the name for the draw XBMP function down here. The position should be the same as well as the size. So I just need to click this restart button. And in a few seconds, I should see the static image being displayed on this OLED display. And since it looks nice and there are no problems, let's try to run it also on the real Arduino. Let's start by copying the code and pasting it into the Arduino IDE. Now, if you have never used the UADG2 library before, you have to go to libraries and then search for UADG2 and click the install button in here. Since I'm using the Arduino Uno, I will select it from my list and then click the upload button. The connection between the Arduino Uno and the OLED display is the same as inside the walkway sketch, meaning that the ground goes to ground, the VCC goes to 5 volts, and then the SDA, the serial data, goes to pin A4, and the SCL, the serial clock, goes to pin A5. If you don't want to remember those two pins, on some Arduino Uno boards there are also dedicated SDA and SCL pins which you can also use. Underneath those are actually the same pins, those are pins A4 and A5 just with a different name. And so with everything connected, once I restarted the Arduino board, we should see our static screenshot. And here is a preview of a few different OLED displays with different colors. This one has the first few lines in a yellow color and the rest is blue. For that display, the graphic would probably need some adjustments, but all the other displays looks nice. But this is again just a static screenshot, so I think it's time to create all those individual digits and show different digits based on some values. I mean, based on time value, of course. Let's jump back to Photopy and we already know that each digit is 32 pixel wide but let's find out what's the height of the digit so I'll select the selection of one digit and it seems to be around 32 by 49 pixels. So I will create a new document and set it to the size for 10 digits so the width will be 320 pixels by 49 pixels with the black background and we want to copy those digits into the document and we can do this by selecting the digits so select one of those digits together with the threshold effect and just move it drag it over the new project.psd file and it should be copied in here I will align it properly with the arrow keys to be touching the left side of the document and then I will create nine more copies of this digit by dragging this later with the alt and shift key being pressed so 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and I want to make sure that the last digit is nicely aligned to the right side of the document then I want to select all those digits with the shift key being pressed and then I can click this icon which is equal gaps and it should space it accordingly so now every digit is only taking 32 by 49 pixels the next step is the same as the last time, we want to select all those segments that shouldn't be visible. So I'll start clicking, so this will be number 0, this will be number 1, number 2 and so on and so on. Then I will create a new group and apply the layer mask, but not for those digits. I want to add the pattern fill inside this group, so our newly created pattern will be inside this group and it will be hiding those segments that shouldn't be visible. And now we have all 10 digits, we just need to export those as individual PNG files. I will create a copy of this background layer and then select everything and group it together and call those digits. 
and convert this into the smart object. Then I will create a new layer and I will select the selection of the size of 32 by 49 pixels, so like this, and fill it with black color. So edit fill with the black color, hit the OK button, and then again I want to create nine more copies, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. The last one should be aligned to the right side of the document, and I will use the same trick to set the equal gaps to be positioned properly. Then I will move the digits layer over the first layer, and if I press the Ctrl Alt G shortcut, the content of the digits layer will be only displayed over this layer, over this 32 by 49 pixel area, and then I just need to repeat the process for every other digit. After that, I will put every digit inside a separate group and name this group with dash e dash, for example, digit number zero. Now, the dash e dash is quite important because then we can use the file export layers and only export layers which start with dash e dash string, so that's quite helpful. So I'll continue like this, so dash e dash digit number one and so on and so on. And once we have all the groups in place, I will go to File, Export Layers and hit the Export Layers button. And this is the content of the generated zip file. By the way, there is a reason why I have used the Smart Object for those individual digits, because I can double click the Smart Object and open the Smart Object Layers and maybe make some changes here, for example, using the different pattern. If I select a different pattern, like this one, I can select File, Save a Smart Object and all the digits in the main PSD file will be updated with this new pattern. But let's keep the same pattern for now and generate the C style array from those individual PNG images. For that, I will again be using the image to CPP website, so I will select all those files, then scroll down and there should be a preview of those individual digits, click the swap checkbox, then generate code and copy output. Then jump to the box with simulation, and we don't need this full screen image, so I'll just comment it out. And we don't actually need this array from the last time, so I'll delete this as well, and then paste all our individual digits together with this helper array. And this one is actually quite important because it has references for all those individual digits. So instead of drawing the image using this name, we can use this array instead, and then use the index from one up to nine. And let's actually rename this array, for example, to bitmaps digits. And we want to use this for our draw xbmp function, for example, first digit number two, but we need to change the size and position. So we know the size is 32 by 49 pixels. The size is actually also listed for every generated image, but for positions, we need to go back to photo P. And what I will do is I'll create a new layer and fill the size of 32 by 49 pixels with some color. Let's, for example, use yellow and lower the opacity. So this will be the position of the first digit. This will be the position of the second digit, the third digit and the last digit. And you can see they are overlapping a little bit. And what I can do is I can select the layer and click this distances checkbox and it will show me that the Y position is seven while the X position is a zero. So that will be the position for the first digit. So zero and seven. For the second one, it's 30 and seven. So the X will be 30 and the Y will also be seven. And let's, for example, draw digit number four. So that will be four hours. Then for the minutes, the first digit will be the X position of 66. So the X position should be 66 and maybe draw digit number three. And the last digits for minutes is the X position 96. So set the X position to 96 and maybe draw digit number five. Just to make sure that we are showing a different number, let's restart the simulation and see what happens. And we indeed see the value of 2435, but we are missing the column in between. And instead of using images, I think that we can just use the UADG2 library function to draw rectangles because we know the size and the position. We just need to find out the correct function, which is called drawbox, which draws the filled rectangle. So I'll just copy this function into our code in between drawing the hours and minutes. Also, it's not required. And then try to remember the size and position. So X will be 63 and 21 for Y position. And the size should be 4 by 4 pixels. As for the second dot, the X will be 61 and the Y will be 37. So 61 and 37 and the size is the same 4 by 4 pixels. And once we restart the simulation, we have a fully dynamic digit, we are just not changing them yet. So let's fix this by adding a few new variables. One will be hours and let's just set it to 12. The second one will be minutes. Let's set those to 34 and let's also keep a track of seconds and set those to 56 for now. So instead of hard coding those indexes, we want to use the first digit for hours and the second digit for hours and then the first digit for minutes and the second digit for minutes. And we can get the first digit simply by dividing the hours by 10 because if we not specify the decimal value, it will be the integer division and we can get the second digit by using the modular function of 10. So I'll do the same thing also for minutes. So the first digit will be minutes divided by 10 and the second digit will be minutes modulated by 10. Let's restart this one more time. 
and we have the same screenshot as in the beginning but now we are using variables to set those digits now there is one thing that might be hard to notice some of those digits are being cropped off so this digit number one and digit number three they are actually not drawn fully and that's because by default the uadg2 library draws non-transparent images we have to change it by calling the set bitmap mode function set it to one to draw the transparent images so just copy this and paste it in our code after clearing the buffer make sure that we are drawing the transparent images and now all those digits are fully drawn before we show a real-time value let's increase those variables to see some kind of animation and it should be very simple i will just increase the seconds by one and if the seconds is bigger than 60 i will set it back to zero but i will also increase the minutes and if the minutes is bigger than 60 i will set the minutes to zero but also increase the hours and if the hours is bigger than 24 in that case also set the hours to be zero and so as i restart the simulation the time is slowly changing and it will jump from four to five because we've set the seconds to be 56 but one more thing that i wanted to do is to animate this column and only show it for odd or maybe even seconds so i'll say that if the seconds modulo by two equals zero so every second second only then we will draw the column in between so even when it takes time for those digits to change there is still the column in the middle being animated and this is how the sketch looks like running on the real Arduino. Let's make one more change and that is to show the real time. And there are a few different ways how to do that. The simplest one is to use the real time clock module or the RTC module. The nice thing is that Walkwit supports real time clock module being the DS1307. And there are some example sketches, for example, reading current time using the RTC lib. So if I open the sketch and running, you will see the current time and date. And it looks like that we are using the RTC library that we need to add to our sketch. So inside up here, I will add a new RTC library. But we also have to go to library manager and type in RTC lib to add it to the project. And then we need to define a new RTC instance. So I'll just copy this one as well. Maybe after initializing the display, then call the RTC begin function in the setup function. So inside the setup, we will start the RTC clock and then we will get the current time by calling the now function in the loop. So now function in the loop and we can get the hours from variable now.hour so our hours will be now.hour the minutes will be now.minute and finally seconds will be now.second so seconds will be now.second we don't need this helper code so i'll just comment it out but we need to add the rtc module to our project so i'll stop the simulation click the plus icon and add the rtc module move it next to the arduino board and the connection is listed in the documentation but since it's using the iScore c connection it will be connected the same way as the display meaning that the ground will go to ground vcc or 5 volts will go to 5 volts and then the sda will go to pin a4 and scl to pin a5 and you can see it's being highlighted for us so connecting this is quite simple let's restart the simulation one more time and now it should be showing the correct time now since we are getting the time from the RTC module, we don't have to wait one second between drawing the frames, so I can just comment out the delay, and if I restart the simulation, it should look the same. So I guess it's time to test this on the real Arduino. I will copy the code into clipboard and paste it into the Arduino IDE. And again, if you have never used the RTC library before, you have to install it by going to libraries and then type in RTC lib and click the install button. And then same as the last time, click the upload button to the Arduino Uno board. Now connecting the RTC module to the Arduino Uno is quite tricky because it uses the same i c connection as the OLED display, which means that there are no pins left for the RTC module. What you can do is to use a breadboard, or what I usually like to do for a simple project is to use this breadboard shield. With a few wires we can connect both the OLED display and the RTC module to the same pins on the Arduino Uno board. And once I restarted the Arduino we can see some time but it's not at the correct time. And that kind of makes sense because we have never set the correct time for the RTC module. What we can do is we can use this magic line, this one that will set the time and date to the time and date when the sketch was uploaded to the Arduino. So I'll just copy this and paste it in our setup function. So after calling the RTC begin, we will adjust the time based on the time and date of uploading the sketch and upload it one more time. And that's it. So now we have a fully functional clock using the Arduino Uno, the OLED display and the RTC module. It's quite simple, but if you want to simplify this project even more, you can use the new Arduino Uno R4 Minima, because this board has the RTC module already built in. And of course, you can find some examples how to use it on the Arduino website. Now, since I like clocks, I have a few more videos covering this topic. Here I have analog clock on this 128 by 128 OLED display, again driven by Arduino Uno. I have also created this wooden clock, again using the Arduino which is hidden inside and using those 8x8 LED matrix displays. 
you can also see that I'm using the same RTC module as today. I've created a custom theme for those hackable smart watches and those use very special sunlight readable display. I've also created this project. This is a display for showing PC statistics. It's called TERS X display, but you can also use it to show analog clock. As usual, all the links to those videos will be in the description. And that's all for today. If you have any questions, please put those down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.